Building an infrastructure of distribution like this in a country the size of China is incredibly complicated and difficult, but at the same time, it's a huge driver of poverty alleviation because it gives job and employment to a lot of people in those villages. You know, it's always a chain, right? So you go from this person to that delivery center, to that delivery center, and a whole bunch of people are getting employed, getting jobs, getting income because of this. This is just giving the conditions so that people can help themselves, creating the conditions so that people can build a better life for themselves. And these highways, these roads, these bridges are part of that. So tourism flows in and products flow out. I've got a couple of photographs you could probably show. The two photographs of the roads. The G312, I first cycled in uh, 2014. You can see to the left-hand side of the picture, there is a road. That's the G30. That's a toll road. So the cars that are on there are avoiding the tolls or they're just going from local towns to local villages and, and just using it as a side road. For us on cycles, we had no choice. That was the only road that we could use. That was 2014. This road is what the G312 looks like now. Once you've done that, then you can start moving products around. And just as a, an example, two years ago in 2019, my wife and I were in Xinjiang and at the side of the road, we decided to stop and buy some melon. And we were chatting with the guy and asked him, is it possible to send these to my wife's family in Guangdong? And he said, yes, it takes 36 hours. And we bought some, had them packed and sent. The day after that, my family were eating them for lunch in Guangdong. That can only happen when you have two things. One is the infrastructure for the roads And the other one is the the unsung hero of the poverty alleviation, which, in my opinion, is the express delivery companies. When you look at it, you say, okay, what is the definition, the international definition of poverty? Oh, living under one dollar a day. Um, but I don't think that that actually um, reflects the reality of what poverty is now what about the farmers that don't work at um, factories they just have a, a household they have a, a piece of land and they have a roof over their heads and they have the ability to get produce from their land they might not get money or income but do we consider them poor and the people who move to the cities they are provided with room board food uh, clothing um, and a salary, he is provided with resources and, and, and support systems that allow him to save $250 a month. That becomes $3,000 a year. Over five years, that's, well, $15,000 that he can invest into his education or invest into a small business. And little by little, he will reach higher levels of the income bracket, helping him creating a path, creating a blueprint to enter the middle class of China. Uh, but the, the fact is this, there are three pillars. In poverty alleviation, there are three things. Does the person have enough food? Does a person have proper clothing? Does a person have a roof over their head? If they've got those three things, then they're not in abject poverty. So the, the, the money value isn't important at all. What's important is, can this person live with the food? Can this person get an education? And can this person... Uh, be sheltered from the, the weather. In China, everyone has a home to go to. Now, you may not want to go home. You may not want to live with your parents. You may not want to live in your home village, but your home village will support you. If you are homeless and on the street, the police will find you, give you a ticket back to your hometown where someone will meet you and they will then help you to rehouse you, even re-educate you and not allow you to be homeless again. Now, I challenge anybody, they will say to me, but there's thousands of homeless people in Guangzhou, for example, and they're sleeping under the roads and they're sleeping on the side of... Well, they are. They have a home. They choose to save money by sleeping in a tent under the road and going to work every day. There's the difference. Think about the size of China. Not mm. one measure fits all. It's impossible. No. So they have this 
cadres that go into communities, Bureaucrats. that go into villages, that, and their job is to find out what can the people in this village do. This is a, a center that is in the village that they built, the new community that they built, but they still have photos of how things used to be. So as you can see, this is how the people from the cliff, as they call them, oh my God. used to live. You can see how they used to climb. People who still want to live there, because some people have chosen. The scheme that they have was very simple. They'll give you an apartment. The cost is 10,000 RMB, up to the maximum cost of one apartment. And I want to show you this community, which is absolutely beautiful. The maximum is 30,000 RMB for one apartment. Wow. It's absolutely fine. Yeah. It's three bedrooms, one bathroom, your kitchen. Yeah. yeah. In a gated community. I want to show yeah. you a project also in this area, but a completely different approach. What we're going to do is we're going to improve it and we're going to allow you to, to generate income by offering, well, better breakfast opportunities. So this is what it this used to look how like. I used to live in the past. And these are the houses that they have been helped to build. You can see here the development of this project and the uh, involvement of the community. They build their own houses with help from, from mm. uh, organizations in government, of course. It's how personal these measures are, how personal yeah. these programs are, so that, that they, they satisfy the needs and the desires and the wants of the community. It's mm -hmm. not an imposition, it's a suggestion. The difficulty that people in the West have is that the politicians and their governments talk and talk and talk and talk, but don't yes. really do. Yeah. Here, after they do, okay, they talk about it, but it's done, it's real, it's true. This is in a town, that that actually is not the, the, the hotel that we stayed in, but these houses are genuine wooden houses. This house has been built by the family probably one or two generations ago, and then it's been re uh, renovated. The local government has said, if you build a house in this style, we will help you by providing you with all the wood. Then the local government has said, if you want to set aside three or four rooms in this house, and you can see there's a very, very large house, we will provide you with a builder, and we will train your family in how to manage your house and you can charge people to come. Now, the deal is if you get charged to come to this house, the fee is, for example, $300, 300 RMB a night. The householder gets 100. The builder who developed it gets 100 and the government gets 100 back from their investment. The builders investing the house, get the, the people who own the house don't pay a cent they get 100 RMB, 30%. They've learned how to operate their, their business, and now they're getting a, a revenue stream from it. Now, that revenue stream changes after five years. So for the first five years, it's 30, 30, or 33, 33, 33. And after that, it's 100% to the homeowner. Now, the interesting thing about what the government is doing is they're plowing more money back into the region as well. My final thought is, like the experience is all about the future. It's not about the government giving money to the to these areas, to the people. It's about improving education level. It's about training you to manage mm. your facilities, your industry in this area. It's about help you to increase your income. I think that's what I really concerned about this content that we share and we talked about. I need to talk about dignity. I need to talk about the dignity of people. I need to talk about dreams. When you're poor in your soul, when there is no future for you, when there is no path for you, that's real poor. That's, that's my take. That we do not see in China. China does not give out stimulus checks. China mm. gives people a fishing rod. They now know how to fish so they can feed themselves for life. Mm.